Joining me today on the Uniweb interview show, Holly Campbell, author of Ghost and also The Unnamed. Um, Holly, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. It's my pleasure. Uh, You're in the UK, right? Yep. What you, now we we had a little bit of uh, getting this straight, and I've had it with a couple other people. What time is it over in the UK right now? Uh, it's twenty to five at the moment. Um, I know when we booked it, it was originally four, but then our cops went forward. Yeah, yeah. it's weird. I always think it's so strange to talk to people in other on other continents and other countries. Uh, it's like you're in the future, you know. Am I the first UK one or? No, you're like, I've talked to a lot of UKs, talked to some Australians and some Netherlands, uh, some South Africans. We've been all over the globe, globe trotting. Um, I'm excited to talk to you, though, about because your books, ju- you just published these two books, Ghost yep. and The Unnamed. You published them like a day apart as well, right? Yeah, I, um, I wrote Ghost like, a few years back, and I did try the traditional publishing route, and then... I tried that with the unnamed as well, but I one of the bits of feedback I got was that it was too dark for agents to be interested in. So mm. I decided if I was going to self-publish that one, I may as well self-publish the book. Awesome! It was too dark. It's so it's it's the original manuscript that you had before, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, it. I don't consider it that dark. But then again, I have quite a dark mind when it comes to. <laughs> So it's hard to judge. The basis, the base level of darkness is... Yeah. Uh, so it starts, a girl lost for years, a town with a sinister secret, a boy caught up in things he doesn't understand. Where does... Uh, we'll start with the unnamed. Um, where did the idea for this book come from? Uh, and kind of what's... Wh- I'm looking at the synopsis here, but kind of in your own words, what, what's this book about? Um, it's about a... Uh, it's mainly focused on this boy, Jamie, who is, he's, he's struggling with uh, his mental illness issues, got depression mm-hmm. and uh, trauma issues, and he's trying to deal with them. And he ends up meeting this uh, girl who gets found uh, naked, bleeding, and pregnant in the forest. Oh my gosh. And, <laughs> and he ends up getting involved in this kind of whole conspiracy that's surrounding her, and there are cults and ancient witch deities buried under the ground and it it was just it got to a point where it was just kind of insanity pouring onto the page that's great it it's never it's never a bad thing to pour out the insanity onto a page right uh what what was it that sparked this idea for you uh i always had i i had toyed with the idea of the the girl uh who goes missing and then comes back like 11 years later uh, mm-hmm. you know, a few other things but I'd never managed to really work it. This was the first one I've done um, writing from a male perspective well, or male centric rather. Um, okay. So so the, it's a male main character? For, yeah. First person perspective? Uh, no it's third person I'm getting. <laughs> I normally do first person so. Um, That's okay. It's, uh, it's primarily focused on Jamie the boy and okay. it actually started as a um, project that I was doing for my creative writing uh, degree and mm. so we had, to, we had to do like an extended piece and that's where I wrote this one scene and I really liked it and I went back to it and kept messing with it and eventually I managed to actually do something decent. That... <laughs> you just kept adding on to it, huh? Yeah. That's awesome. So you went to school for uh, writing then? Uh, well, I went to uh, uni and did um, a joint honours of English literature and creative writing. And when did you, uh, did you just recently graduate or is this something? Uh, like... I graduated from my BA two years ago and I did a master's last year. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> Um, I ask that because I'm I'm always interested to find out. So, is has writing been something that has been a passion for you your entire life? Yeah, I've been. I think the first thing I started writing was when I was nine. Um, wow. it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of terrible, but it was 
<laughs> you were nine, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's okay. it was basically I'd um I'd heard the name Buffy the Vampire Slayer and got the wrong end of the stick and thought that she was a vampire who went around slaying things. So I <laughs> about that. Um, and, yeah, nice. It was. It I was, love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I I watched it now and I do actually <laughs> I do really like it. But, yeah. Um, it was, it was my first book. Like the chapters were only three pages long, but it was the first thing that I wrote that was like properly a proper story and you were nine years old yeah <laughs> wow that's incredible i was still learning how to spell my last name when i was nine um so that's good <laughs> we all learned it different. we all learned it there's a lot of letters in it that's right it's tough um so for for people who uh haven't read have can you give me uh, like what was that? I know the idea behind the unnamed, but what are you trying to? I know you said it's just like a ton of insanity, but is is there something you're trying to understand in writing this, or a story that you're trying to tell? Like, what is the overarching theme and plot of this story? I I, I wanted to kind of um, I I feel like with horror stories you can kind of take things that are quite unpleasant in real life and make them not more palatable but more understandable in, in right. if they're in a fictional setting so i yeah. wanted to do um it's quite a personal story because i wanted to do a character who's very similar to me um which sounds quite conceited i think but um it... <laughs> we're all self we're all selfish people holly don't it's okay <laughs> but, um, I I struggled with uh, depression and anxiety and yeah. uh, trauma stuff, so I wanted a character that similar to that, and I wanted to try and write a way that people who don't have these um, mental illnesses could kind of understand them a bit more. So yeah. there is a um, there are there are supernatural elements throughout the book, and there's a a creature that basically like liquid shadows and mm -hmm. it the way it works is kind of like it's like weaponized depression it crawls inside your head and like taints all mm. your thoughts well, at least so it, it, like man that's that's how you manifested depression in the story yeah wow when um and i always ask this question to people because there, there i feel like there's always a, a deeper meaning in, in fiction we're always trying to understand something in our own psyche in some way what did you did you un uncover anything about yourself or discover um something that you didn't know before writing this story i no i think this one um it's uh, it was just something that i'm aware of uh with my like all aspects of myself i'm aware of going to this story but it was quite nice to kind of stretch um I've, I've never really written something that personal and that close to home so sure it's quite nice to try and uh, um investigate how far i could go with that well i guess did it give you did it did it bring you to a better um acceptance of what you're what you're dealing with um mostly yeah there's still some things um that it writing it may not have helped with sure yeah but um we can't fix yeah. all of our problems in one book i mean I we need to <laughs> uh, gotta, have, gotta have room for a sequel that's exactly right yeah we fix all of our problems in one book it's like we just shot our career in the foot so <clears throat> so ghost let's talk about ghost and this book came out the day after the unnamed right uh it yeah, I think so. Did I, 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 I might have got those. I might have got those mixed up. I, I think I posted both of. I put, uploaded both of them to Amazon at the same time. I, okay. I, it just depend on depended on when they got through. Um, okay. I wrote that one in my second year of uni. It was kind of an experiment for me. It. I I normally try to stick to just like straight horror. This was somewhere between fantasy, sci-fi, and horror, and I have no idea where exactly it falls. Um, it, that, that one is first person, and it's um, exploring the relationship, or trying to explore the relationship between uh, a mother and a daughter. Uh -huh. um, 
although I don't know if that came across. <laughs> the, the daughter kind of disappears for a bit. <laughs> Yeah, the, the synopsis you have on, you mind if I read it on what you have online here? It says, I am a girl without a name. I didn't lose it. It was stolen from me. And the girl's name is S. S is not like other girls. That sounds pretty, pretty awesome. She is a member of a race hunted to the edge of extin- extinction, a race with unique powers. For S, all that matters is staying hidden. Um, the I'm a girl without a name is, I think, the first line in the book. Um, okay. So it's she's uh, a skinwalker, so she can change the way she looks, mm. uh, and it's set in kind of a close future where this race has been discovered, and humanity's not super keen on an idea of people who can look however they want, and there's criminal implications. So yeah. they they start gathering them up and marking them all, and then. They they say that they're not um, they're not trying to hurt them. They're just trying to identify them. But if you identify them, then you can't stop people going out and finding them and getting rid of them. Like so, we just want to get to know you better, so other people can kill you. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. So it's it's her. She's not marked because um, she managed to get away before they did that. But it's her, and then there's her brother, and there's a kind of there's an organization who are specifically looking for them to try and weaponize them in a way. They want to experiment on them and see what they can do. And she ends yeah. up um, uh, being forcibly impregnated while she's in this wow. facility. Is, is this um, something that's going to be part of a series? All of the, all of the stories that I and writing are kind of part of this big long timeline that I've set up. Um, are they in the, they're in the same timeline? Like the yeah. no, name? They, they don't really, not all of them are going to kind of um, reference one another. There might just be like a few Easter eggs. But um, it's this whole timeline from like beginning of time to right. this uh, big eventual supernatural apocalypse. So this one, I think, um, I was working out when all, everything's set, and I think this one's about 2040 in the timeline. Mm-hmm. But it's it's not. Um, they, they work as standalone. So it's, it's, and they're all headed towards an an eventual supernatural apocalypse. Yes. Do you have Do you know how many books? Um, are in this series that I mean, you have it up here, like the stories you're gonna tell. I have um, I have a small list of them, but it's get it gets longer like every day. Um, yeah. I keep coming up with sequels to ones that I haven't written yet, which mm. is probably not good. <laughs> um, well, it's great that I, you're I, flooded I, with I, ideas, right? Yeah, it's just very hard to get any of them down. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've got, 11 in order planned, um, including these two. And then there are more. I just have to work out where they fit in the timeline and think. Right. Wow. That's, I mean, I'm excited to find out more about, about, about the stories. And I want to know, too, um, when it comes to horror, because it sounds like the genre that you're writing is like a, a horror, a horror. Um, in the horror genre, mostly. What is it about writing horror that uh, appeals to you? I find um, I find that reality is quite scary and that um, things that are in the horror genre are, that actually tend to be quite tame in comparison. So, And I like that there's somewhere where I can put my monsters that I know that they're going to be defeated and contained and controlled and that they're not just rambling around my head. Yeah. So you you feel like uh, reality is scarier than fiction? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so are, are a lot of these inspirations from, like, real-life things that are going on? I mean, I know with the unnamed... Um, 
the depression and that kind of thing. But with with Ghost being this this girl who doesn't have a name and who's being hunted by other people for being different, basically. That one is a bit less. Um, uh, that that one I was in a slightly better place when I wrote it, so it's less <laughs> less yeah. dark um, yeah. than the other ones. But um, yeah, I do try to put a lot of if I have like bad experiences or things, I want to put them into something creative or something that might potentially uh, be helpful to other people, even if it's in a strange way. Yeah, yeah. Um... Is that something that you set out to do as a writer is to connect and help other people? No, I, I don't think originally when I started uh, writing, that was it was more that I just wanted to help me. Um, but like when I started with the unnamed, that was, um, I, was I, I knew that I wanted to do uh, something that could like maybe find people who were similar to, to me and help them in some way or at least make them feel a bit less alone yeah and these these being your two first two published books right um what have you seen into have you seen a pretty good reaction from have you had people reading any kind of feedback so far i've had um i, I know that people are reading them because i obsessively monitored the, the amazon stuff for like the first month the um, kindle unlimited and stuff yeah um yeah. I've not had any well I had feedback from one person who I know uh who works in my office and she read them both and the first thing I said when she got them was please don't judge me uh for what's in these books <laughs> and but she she really liked them um yeah. she found the unnamed a bit hard no the, the ghost a bit harder to get into because of the first person but um she also she she picked up on a few uh, places in the books where I may have misspelled a word and not picked it up when I was editing, so I've now yeah. been able to go back and edit that. But that's the only feedback I've had. Although I did find out today that someone had left me a five-star rating on Goodreads. So I'm very hey! That. That's, that's, that's it. Aw <laughs> no that's feedback. awesome, right? Yeah, I'm very happy. I mean, it's got to be a, a wonderful feel. I know I, I remember getting my first review back that was good and how, how wonderful it felt to be validated for the work you've done because it's like, I mean, you're really, you are pouring your kind of your heart and soul onto paper. Yeah. It, um, it was It's nice not to, for, for it not to just be family members. Um, yeah. Cause yeah, because you're like, okay, whatever. Fine. As lovely as their feedback is, yeah, it, they they kind of have to be nice to me because, well, because otherwise I would give them Christmas presents. That's right. That's right. <laughs> no Christmas card for you. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. I'm I'm glad you got a good review back. So I want to I want to talk too about um some of your um inspirations for writing. Who are the, who are some of the people as you were growing up and through your development as a writer that stuck out and you were like, holy crap, I want to be able to tell a story like this. Um, I really like Stephen King. Um, I think uh, Pet Cemetery is one of my favorites. I also, I find it quite inspirational with Cujo that he wrote it in a single night and doesn't remember writing it. Um, yeah. I, I actually got it because I wanted to see if it was like, if I could tell that. It was like super drug induced, right? Yeah. It was like, high and drunk <laughs> i could pump out books that fast that's right <laughs> um i i'm a big fan of uh flowers in the attic um by virginia andrews um i haven't read many of her other books though but that one i did find quite inspirational uh it was just, it was just such a unique story yeah so i think those two were probably the key ones and then I, it, she, she's not technically, she's written one book, but, um, uh, Emily Walton, she's a, she's a mus musician and, yeah. uh, she has done a book with the Asylum for Wayward Victorian Girls. And it's yeah. a mixture of, uh, kind of, uh, 
one story and her own story. And I quite liked that aspect because I I found that quite similar to how I was what I was doing with the unnamed. Okay. Um. So, what in terms of have you have you done a lot in terms of marketing for your books to no, get to get the word out there about them? Um, marketing is where I'm a bit. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not so great. I've been the, the Twitter community has been great. Yeah. Uh, especially with Indie April, I've been spamming my link everywhere. Um, uh, but it was pretty much that, and I did. Um, there was a person on Twitter who had a steampunk blog, who um, very kindly advertised my book for I think a week, and then there's this. <laughs> this is it. This is my marketing. It's it's a it's a learning game, right? I mean, in especially in some of the stuff I've learned is just we're not playing a, a short game anymore. We're, it's a long game. So um, with that being said, what do you have planned for the future? Are you, are you in the works of more books right now? Are you writing something else at the moment? I've got a few things started. At the moment, I'm doing some world building, tidying up, because um, uh, I like to put like a kind of supplementary document in my stories. So the unnamed report, um, coroner's report and police report between each chapter. So I figured if I wrote the, the things that I was going to use before I started the story, it would be easier to fit them in. Mm -hmm. uh, I've also got the another story, which is about a kind of a love story between a boy who's got um, kind of a Jacqueline Hyde syndrome. Okay. And yeah. a, uh, he ends up in a kind of weird love square between two werewolves and a serial killer. Oh, <laughs> it's quite the triangle. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm also um, I'm doing a thing. I'm doing uh, lost books where I'm leaving copies of my books in random places with a little note and just saying, if you like this, please pass it on kind of thing um i've done i've left two so far i left one on a train and i left one in the shopping center near where i live and the shopping center one has now moved so i don't know i'm assuming someone's picked it up that's really that's really cool that's like thinking outside the box doing something different yeah i'm hoping that people are actually reading them and not just like abandoning them in some way like ho like hobo books yeah <laughs> it's fantastic I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Start. That's a great idea. <laughs> I said you're the second person who said they want to use that idea. So. <laughs> yeah, it's it's smart because it is. It's like if somebody picks it up and likes it, then you know they have the idea to pass it on. It's like that's some of the best way. It might take a little while, but you know you got one more reader. You got your somebody talking about your book. Hopefully. Yeah, I I always I I like the idea of um the it traveling as well. I I quite like the idea of because the one I left on the train. That could be anywhere by now, and I'm. I quite like the idea of people leaving it on other trains and seeing mm. how far it can get. I'm gonna go put mine in the doctor's office or something. <laughs> That's a good one. I might have hey, to do that. I'm putting the doctor's office. So I also want to know, um, since we are playing a long game here as as writers, first time self published authors. What are your goals? Do you have do you have a list of goals that you set out for yourself when I have, you start list, this journey? I have a list more of um, ambitions that like things that I would love to happen with my books. Like mm -hmm. uh, I practice a lot of my writing doing fan fiction, and I would love to see it one day where um, It'd be someone's, kind of yeah, someone's doing fan fiction of my book. That would be amazing. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think that's currently. The biggest, like I, I know a lot of people, a lot of writers say they want to see their books as um, TV shows and films and stuff, but I think currently my ultimate one is to have it inspire someone else to create something unique. And yeah, I mean that's a great testament to your work, right? That your voice is being heard if somebody else is inspired to do something in light of it. Yeah, um, and well, sometimes it's not so. Because it just means that they found 
so old that they want to edit out. Word of it. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was that was me with some of the fan fiction I wrote. Yeah, but hopefully it's because they they see characters that they love so much that they want to continue their story. Yeah, like I um some of the stories, uh, some of the characters in this story, they're not like the big characters, they're the small ones, and I'm just like, I really want to do something else with that character. I don't have a yeah. story for them, but I'm just gonna pick them in somewhere else <laughs> just because That's I like right. them. <laughs> it's funny how that happens too. Like we fall in love with the side characters that we didn't think would have any major part in the story, and all of a sudden it's like, I want to hear more about this person. Like, what's their deal? <laughs> it's like we created them. <laughs> Two of my favorite characters. I've got um, Kane, who is a he. He's a mall worker, but he's also um, death. He's like a grim reaper for this particular area. And wow. then there's um, Lorenzo. That's, kind of a, that's a wild side job. For, <laughs> yeah. I'm death on the side. Yeah. He's, he, he, like at one point he shows up and the main character is just like, Sue, so are you, are you, are you just like death for the whole world? And he's like, no, I'm really busy with just this town. Um. Wow. <laughs> There's um, a lot of people to kill here. <laughs> there, there, there is a reason why he's so busy, and that shows up in the book. But um, that sounds uh, cool. The, the the other character is Lorenzo, who um, he was he was quite a late arrival into the book, and he he wasn't really intended to be anything but like a kind of a pit stop for main characters, and then yeah. he kind of expanded, and now then he ended up being a love interest and I'm just like oh this is happening and I really like these cute scenes that I get to write between them so. that's awesome so you, you have a lot of stuff going a lot of different stories a lot of different ideas yeah I uh, I have too many ideas um, I've, I've got a giant census of characters because most of the most of the stories are set in this one town um, so some of them aren't like ghostly set elsewhere. Um, but all of the ones in this one town, I've got all of the people who live in the town listed on an yep. Excel spreadsheet and <laughs> all of their names, all of their jobs. It's too big. It keeps crashing my computer. Um, <laughs> so I am currently trying to turn it to turn it into a, a Word document that I can then have a physical copy of. But it's yeah. a long, long time. Oh. too many of them way too many right yeah but it's it's a good problem to have i suppose yeah, yeah. rather rather too many than none at all because <laughs> that's the other extreme could fall into some of the um like the characters that i started with this time i one bit of feedback i've always thought is kind of that my uh speech uh, in stories isn't uh, realistic. Um, I don't know if that's just because I don't talk to people enough. Mm. Um, so in this one, I set out to have. I, I love writing description and I hate writing speech. Um, unless it's stuff. You mean like dialogue? Yeah. Okay. Um, in le- in like unless it is sarcastic because that is just that's just easier to write. Um, yeah. So I had. Um, in the unnamed, I set out with three characters, and each of them have very uh, well. One of them is completely mute, which mm-hmm. uh, the other one is uh, Jamie has social anxiety and he doesn't like talking and he's always got headphones on. Um, and then he's got a younger sister, Callie, who's deaf, so she uh, she signs a bit, but um, for the most part, she stays quite quiet. It was it's quite. It was quite interesting to write characters who don't speak. Who don't speak. Yeah, because yeah. there's, there's got to be some stuff that's just uh, understood, right? Yeah. And you have to do a lot of speaking with the world and how they interact with other other people. That's, that's creative storytelling, though. I mean, there's got to be a lot of creativity in that storytelling. I think with um, Callie and Jamie... Uh, that one was slightly easier because uh, I, I've got a younger sister and I based Callie on her. Um, mm. So, although 
my sister is slightly noisier than Kelly. Um, but yeah. she, it, I, I, I modeled their relationship on our relationship. So it was quite easy when I did want to write some dialogue for her because I could just, it's just like, this is the, how would you react to this right. situation? She got me in trouble more than a few times with, <laughs> with my mum, just like, stop scaring her. Aww. <laughs> awesome. Well, I want to, I want to know too, um, what is your, so for your, your legacy in writing. So a hundred years from now, you, all that's left of you is your books. What do you hope people understand about you from your writing? That is tricky. Um, it is. I, I hope people kind of understand that it's not just me being messed up for the sake of being messed up in some cases. Um, mm -hmm. That it is that I am trying to kind of say something a bit deeper and trying to turn something that might not be discussed in um like normal society into something that can be looked at a bit more um I, i've forgotten the word um <laughs> so you're going for deeper understanding yeah and i would also love it if at some point um my books are being analyzed by uh, over enthusiastic english teachers <laughs> so make it into the literature classes at some yeah. point just like the the author has written that these curtains are blue but to symbolize their deep deep sadness when really the curtains are just blue. I know, right? Like you you I always wonder that when I was in college, like if we're if we're just overthinking all these <laughs> breaking down of all this old yeah. literature, just like maybe the guy just liked boats. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I think it's all funny. English speeches are just secretly repressed um yeah i know right everything everything is about sex all, every analysis is about sex that's it so, they're all very repressed they, yeah. they need they need to talk more about sex <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's what i understand from your writing holly was that she was constantly thinking about sex <laughs> if if someone gets that from those books they are they're they very impressed, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, also, I, Holly, I want to thank you so much for your time coming on uh, the Uniweb interview show today. Uh, I look forward to getting into Ghost and the Unnamed, both available on Amazon.com right now. Do you have a website or uh, somewhere we can connect with you on social media? Uh, I have Twitter. I am unam at unamused Snorlax. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I prefer using my little uh, uh, little pen name rather than having my actual name on Twitter, but yeah, that is me. <laughs> Unamused Snorlax, absolutely. Yeah, I can't. We can't see it in the actual recording. If you want to hold up your Snorlax, I think it's awesome. Yes, is this isn't his normal hat? He's just wearing that today. It's his, it's his fancy interview hat. Yes. <laughs> All of my Pokemon get fancy outfits. I've got a Bulbasaur with a tie. Bulbasaur. Very nice. I actually think I have that tie. Well, Holly, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate you coming on and talking about your two books. Uh, they do sound awesome, and I, I implore everybody to go check them out. I'm definitely going to. They're available on Amazon. They're also a part of Kindle Unlimited, so if you have Kindle Unlimited, you can get them for free, free okay. download. Um, so everybody go check it out. I'll have the descriptions in the link of the video. Awesome. Holly, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. You have a wonderful day.